First, I want to show you some examples of the stuff that our previous participants have done. So these are the actual submissions from people who have taken this course. All of them I've selected who had never coded before. Just to give an idea of what you can achieve if you're just motivated and with the knowledge you gained in these two weeks, you'll be able to build something like this. Let's go through some of the examples just to motivate you to see uh, and give you some ideas of what you can do. So let's go to some example projects. Lost did, he was a <laughs> professor, and I have this large database of all my students and where they've done the internships over many years. And he had this Excel file. So he said, let me just read that Excel file, geocode all the addresses and create a map of where my students have done the internships. Good idea for a project. Again, you can say, I have my Excel file and I will do the geocoding. And again, he was a da Danish geocoder that has much better sense of the Danish addresses that he was working with. And again, this is the URL and he just geocoded this using the API and you know went through this. And finally, he had a nice visualization of a map of all the places where his students had done internship. So good project. Again, anything that you can spend a couple of hours on is a fine by us, right? The idea for this is to help you learn something new with your own data, with your own idea. So can geocoding is a good idea. You can code the next step and say, I'll also visualize the data and see this. You can also save it as a shape file and say, this is a shape file of all the places that I have geocoded. Luigi was very interested in working with OpenStreetMap data. And there's a library called OSMNX that allows you to download and process OpenStreetMap data. And he put this together a really nice notebook. I always use this as a reference when somebody asks about OSMNX. So he put this together and say, I'll use OSMNX to say, I have this place. I want to download all the data for this place. So this city, I want to download all the streets and all the places and create some map of this. So you can, can go through this, is downloaded all the streets, is downloaded all the building footprints that are in OSM and create a visualization and again, convert this to a geodata frame, plot this and finally project this and save this as a geo package to use in the GIS. So great way to get your OpenStreetMap data into a GIS, doing some processing in Python, and you can use this. So see this is an example of what you can do. This is my one of my favorite projects. So Amit was very interested in route optimization. He, I, when he learned about the Open Route Service API that you can do route optimization. So he made up a problem for himself. He said, I want to do this trip that I want to meet Ujwal for a coffee. But before that, I want to start from my home and I want to complete this errands and then I want to meet him for a coffee. So what is the most optimal route I can take that will save me all the time and I can go. So you say, I want to go to this FedEx. I want to fill gas. I want to go to Walgreens. I want to go to Home Depot. I want to do this and then go to the coffee shop. So first step, he had all these addresses in the city where he lives. He geocoded them using the nominate item geocoder. He called the light law. So you can say, I want to start my home here and I want to go to Starbucks, right? And I want to go through this stops. What's the route I can take? And finally, say so these are the points. So I can, should I go here, 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 or what's the order I can go, which is the shortest part. And then use the open route service optimization API. You send the addresses at longs and it'll give you the optimal path along the road network. So this is not just a straight line path. This is along the driving network. You visit this or places in this order, and then you'll be able to visit this. Great example of how to use the Optimation API to solve a problem. And again, if you have a similar problem, we had many people who use this. We have one example running in production where somebody has to visit certain locations every day. So he just says, every day I get a list of addresses I need to visit. They run the code, they get a PDF of the route that they need to take, which is the most optimal route to visit that. And that's running for them in a production every day that they're using it. So again, good idea for a project to try. This is something that you cannot do elsewhere, right? Automation is a very, very hard problem. We have a nice API that does this for you. So leverage that and build that. This was another student who was working on his PhD. He sent me his PhD report just a few months back saying that this is what he used for his PhD research. He was working on mapping all the industrial zones in India. So he had locations and then he wanted to group them into clusters. So he did some Python clustering library. And finally, he was able to identify different clusters of industrial locations. And this was a starting point for his thesis and then, you know, use something else. Again, this kind of clustering, also you can use Python for doing this. And again, I like projects which are relevant to you. So whatever you're working on right now, 
chances are you can use Python to automate that. So take that and say, I'm, I'm going to work on this for next two weeks anyway. Let me use Python to help me learn new things and also help me in my work. This was another example of mapping wildfires. You have data from NOAA, this data set called Optiforms, which gives you a shapefile. And Prem put this together, the notebook, where he said, I want to map the fires that happened in the last 24 hours all the time. So I can say, where are the current fires happening? I want to create a map of that. So you download the data. And this is download the data real time, plotting this using these locations. And then finally, he creates this nice interactive map that shows where are the fires, right? So this is kind of the map you can create quite easily. Say, this is where the fires are happening right now. And this map, once you run the script, the map will get updated with the latest fires. So good example of using Python to build like a real time dashboard. We didn't cover too much of the raster in the code, but if you want to do some raster processing, here's an example of a student who computed NDBI for a city and find out which which neighborhood is the greenest neighborhood using NDBI as an index. So again, you can get the Sentinel-2 data, use raster IO, compute the index. And again, the indexing will be done using raster or same computation that we do using, you know, just band math using NumPy. Do some zonal stats, we have the different polygons of different neighborhoods, and then you compute the greenest neighborhood using that. And finally, you said this neighborhood has the highest DVI on average, which is representative of vegetation. If you do not have an idea and said, suggest something, I'll suggest some ideas that you can try. I have some QGIS tutorials, which are ideal to be implemented as a Python workflow using GeoPandas. So you come to this tutorial, this is on QGIS. You have some data here, you have the workflow, learn the workflow, and then see if you can implement it in GeoPandas. Any of this four is a good starting point. You can also get data for your own region and see how to do this using GeoPandas. Network analysis visualization is also fine. If you really want to do something new and say, I want to do something exciting, I want to use some AI stuff. So I want to show you some AI stuff that you can do with Python now. OpenAI, almost everybody's used ChatGPT now. So OpenAI has an API. You can use ChatGPT using an API. So if you sign up, there's a free API you can sign up with, or it's very inexpensive, and you can build an application. Let me show you an example of the application I built using this. The idea was this researcher was trying to map human-elephant conflict. And they had news articles on where there is a story about, new story about where the elephant and human conflict occurred. And we used, tried to use Python to extract the text and say, can we extract the location of this place? How many people were killed? How many people were injured? And it kind of worked with, you know, I would say half the time it worked, half the time it didn't work. It was very hard to do this kind of text processing. But now we have OpenAI and ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT really understands text very well. So here's an example where we have, you know, enter API keys, we get uh, GPT-4 or GPT-3, whichever model you want. And then you say, I have these three articles, just some news text there. And we can design a prompt saying that, identify the following items from the news article. Location incident, number of people injured, number of people killed, short summary. And you can just give some extra things. And what you get is, ChatGPT will understand what this means. It'll go through each text, extract this, and give you a JSON. So you say, give me a JSON. So when you run this, you suddenly get a data frame of the location that ChatGPT inferred from this piece of text, how many people were killed, and how many people were injured. And since it's very good at understanding text, you just get this. And this is almost perfect. So we ran this through our archive of articles and just went through and identified all the locations and number of people killed and number of people injured. And now you have a database. You can also do geocoding. And now we can say the three news articles we have mapped where they occurred and how many people were injured or killed. Super helpful. Something that like this was impossible to do before we had things like ChatGPT. There is this really nice course called ChatGPT Prompt Engineering. And it teaches you how to use ChatGPT API, open API to solve real problems in production. And you know, this example was kind of you know inspired from this, and I applied this. So something like this: if you have if you have text data, you want to do some text processing, or if you say I want to scrape some data from the web and do something, great project that you can now say I'm using OpenAI API. It looks great on your resume as well. If you're trying to get a Python job, say I know how to use OpenAI API. That's a great thing to be used. One of the big problems in remote sensing was if you wanted to identify objects in data. So for example. I want to identify buildings from this satellite image. That's a very hard problem. You have to, you know, when if you want to use AI, you have to build a neural network, a CNN neural network, you have to give a lot of training data, train a model, and that becomes a PhD project. But Facebook released a model, which is one of the foundation models where it can take any picture 
and identify objects from it. And there is a library that was built on top of this called Segment Geospatial, which takes this model, and now you can run this model on satellite imagery, aerial imagery, drone imagery, and extract objects. And again, like OpenAI, it, it, it is almost like a human who can interpret images. So you can just describe what you want or show what you want, and you can do this. So for example, you can say, you know, in this example, this segmented, so it just give a satellite imagery, it'll just identify objects. It'll identify all objects. If you don't want all objects, you can say, oh, I want stuff that I'm dropping. So stuff in blue and stuff in red. Just a few examples, and it'll go and identify that. Here it said, I really wanted to identify buildings. So you just drop some points and it'll just go and extract all the buildings. You can also do a text prompt and say, identify tree from this image. Just type tree, and it just goes and finds all the trees. And you get shapefile out. So you get input as a satellite image, output is a shapefile or a geo package with the vectors. And this works better than any model that you can build or any other traditional methods. So now if you have a satellite imagery you want to identify objects, using this segment geospatial in Python is a great use of a project. So, so I have this imagery, I want to do some analysis, I'm going to extract the data and do this. Kishin Wu, who built this, has a lot of video tutorials. You can use this. Just today, I put this notebook together. So let me show you how to identify farms which are of circular shape, center pivot irrigation farms in this region. So do, look at the tutorial first from the website. So you know, this is using Colab. So when Colab is a hosted Jupyter environment that Google provides, Colab is important here because any of these deep learning models will require a GPU. Likely your computer doesn't have a GPU. So if you run it on your own computer in Jupyter Lab, it'll be very slow. So when you have using Colab, you have different options on what backend you need to choose. And here you can choose GPU. So this will use a GPU. Google provides it free GPU on the cloud using Colab. So use Colab, run your GPU, it won't run on CPU, it'll be very slow. So Colab is fine. You can just use the, the free version. You can use this. In Colab, once you connect, you will have a cloud folder where you can have the data. And here you will have to upload your data. So here, this is where you will say, I want to upload some raster file. So you have a satellite image, you upload it here. And once you have it, you can go and run the cells. So here is the satellite image I downloaded. So this is a Landsat image, Landsat NDVI image. And I had just saved it on my computer. And we can just say, this is the TIFF file. I'd upload it to Colab and run this. So this is the, the notebook thing. And I said, identify all the central irrigated files. We initialize the SAM model. Again, Facebook makes it free for anybody to run this. No API key needed. We just use it free of cost, even commercially. So it's available. And we just say segment the image. SAM.generate, you can see 0049 seconds. 49 seconds for this image to segment. And what you get is, let's, let me just, let's just run this. I think it will be good to see. Or let me show you the output that you get. I think it, I don't have the source data anymore. So the output that I got from this. So this was the output that I got. I got the polygons as a shape file for all the farms that we had used in our image. So something like this you can do, and it works beautiful, almost perfectly. You can see this is the NDVI image, and this is the kind of polygons that were extracted. You can also refine and say, I only want green ones, I only want full ones, just drop few points, and you can segment this. So again, if you have a object identification problem using geospatial, you can now know how to use Python, you know how to use the segment geospatial, you can run this, and you'll be able to use this for work. Next, if you feel that you still do not have enough confidence on certain libraries, say, I don't really understand Panda as well. I need more practice. Here are some courses that you can take. There are two courses by University of Helsinki that I really like. There's this GeoPython course, which is similar to this course. It covers Pandas, GeoPandas, NumPy, and all of that. But instead of a two-week course, this is a semester-long course. And they have all the kind of thing where you do a deep dive on pandas, deep dive on for loops. You say, come here, and it'll just show you the for loops in kind of different examples. So if you want more practice, you can do this course. This was the second one is the advanced level. This is a beginner course. There is this another course by Ellen Downey. This is a bunch of notebooks. They 
it's not a geospatial course, but it's heavily focused on pandas. So if you want more practice on pandas, you can come here and find some use cases. And again, he takes the real problem, solves this using pandas, so you can kind of learn how to do this. And there are a few other courses, including the chat GPT course that I linked. We have a bunch of tutorials. So I have this tutorials, including some video tutorials using GeoPandas and X-Ray. So you can come here and see those notebooks. I have the intermediate course on visualization you can do. Use this as a reference. I'm a big fan of learning by doing. If you just keep taking courses, you might take, end up taking 10 courses and at the end you can't do anything because you can do not code it. So I would use this as a resource and say, I'm now working on my project. You are here to help, but I really don't understand how pandas work. Go and find a section of the course that explains pandas, learn that, and then start on the project. So use this as a reference to learn specific skills rather than just taking the course one after the other. That's my recommendation. You learn more just by starting to do. So once you start doing, whenever you are stuck, take the help of the internet, take help of ChatGPT, take help of any of the courses, and then solve your problem.